If you're like me and you like to run large scale workshops in Miro with lots of custom canvases, lots of moving parts, then you may have noticed that at some points Miro performance starts to degrade and become difficult for users to actually participate in the workshop. I think I figured out a quick trick to make this a little bit better. As an example, here's the Ideal Present Canvas by Jay Bloom. This is a great tool for teams to do planning, to think about the future, but also act from the present. And as you can see, this canvas has a lot of moving parts. And if you're like me and you have 20 participants, well, I'm going to copy this canvas 20 times. And so you get all your canvases laid out, you get everyone into the room, and all of a sudden things start to slow down a little bit. And here's why this happens. You'll notice that in the canvas itself, there's something like 20 elements that actually put the canvas together. So things like this background, the description, um, the little arrows and things like that. And then there are 24 interactive elements, sticky notes that the people who are participating will actually use to record their thoughts and so on. The users only actually need to record or interact with these parts, but they also end up with these parts as well reproduced in their workspace. So as this scales up, you have 44 total elements. With five users, it's 220. With 20 users, it's 880. With 50 users, it's 2200 elements. And as you'll notice, the performance starts to degrade once you hit a certain point. So what we want to do is figure out a way to reduce the total number of elements in the board so that we never hit that point where it slows down. Here's how to do that. If you go over to your canvas, create a frame around using the frame tool. As you can see, the frame tool is on the left here. Just click and drag over the canvas. And then very carefully remove all of your interactive elements, the things you actually want the users to interact with. I'm just holding down shift and click to select each element. So I've got all 24 interactive elements selected. And I'm just going to move them off to the side here. And then this base canvas, what we're going to do is we're going to click on that frame, click on more, where this ellipsis is, and then export as image. You can export it as a small image, that should be just fine. And you'll see that you downloaded a little JPEG here, that'll be about 200 or 300 kilobytes for a canvas of this size. Just take that image and drag it back onto the board. And now what you've done is you've compressed all 20 of these parts into a single object on the board, an image, a JPEG like this. And you'll notice that you can come over here, and if I send it to back here, now you can position the elements that you had underneath or on top of the canvas here. You might have to resize a little bit to make it work, but now instead of 20 elements for the canvas and 24 for the interactive elements, you have only one element for the canvas and then the 24 for the interactive elements. So you'll notice that if you reproduce here, just like this, the way this scales up is now you're only scaling up 25 elements per user. And you never hit that high point of performance issues, or you can at least push it a little bit farther. So you're dealing with 1,250 elements for 50 users instead of 22 elements for 50 users. This actually makes a big difference. I've noticed that the performance improves significantly when I do this. So try it out. Let me know if it works for you or if you notice any sort of nuance here that I'm missing. Um, I think this seems to work really great for improving board performance and pushing the number of users you can have on your board at any point in time just a little bit further. Uh, let me know if it works, and thank you for watching.